Welcome to episode 196 of Clarity Compressed. I'm Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host, and today we're going to talk about all those critics. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I'm going to start today with a quote. I don't think I've ever, 196 episodes, I don't think I've ever started a podcast with a quote. So I'm going to read it to you. And this is called The Man in the Arena, it is known as, uh, by Theodore Roosevelt. And it goes something like this. It's not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. They don't write them like that anymore. I've heard that quote many times. Um, I've read it a few times. And it just came to mind recently in a, in a podcast that I did with my business partner, Kyle. And I've been kind of marinating on it a little bit because there are critics everywhere. Our lives used to be just full of critics that we could see and that we knew and that we interact with. But in an era of social media, in an era that will soon be the metaverse, there are critics everywhere. And for anyone who puts anything out into the world, whether that's just a thought, a piece of art, a business idea, et cetera, et cetera, there are people that are just ready and waiting to tear it apart. The people that tear things apart, it's usually driven by insecurity, right? If you, you see a really critical person, or if you find yourself being critical, you, you should know and really know that it's insecurity rearing its head. And I'm not hating on insecure people. I have insecurities all the time. And there have been times in my life when insecurities lead me to be critical of someone, their behavior, their mentality, the way they do things, right? Because it makes me feel better about myself and the way I do things. Or the old like, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. You know, they're all they're all the old saying, you ever get two contractors together and you'll have five opinions on how you could have done it? Or people that are always saying, here's the problem and never following up with, here's a suggestion. But better yet, after that, if you have the people that are like, here's the problem, right? Those people are just critics. They just tear people's houses down because they don't build their own. The next level is like, well, I see some issues here and here's how I would suggest fixing them. Okay, well, at least you brought some productive suggestion to the table that can maybe help us grow or help us be better. But the third one, the third level, is the one that this quote talks about. The third one is the level of person that doesn't just throw stones or criticize or give suggestions. That's how we could have done it better. You could have done it better, right? We call these people Monday morning quarterbacks. But the people that risked doing it, the people that hit record and started making content, the people that filed for a business certificate, the people who left their job to do something else, the people these days, I'll say this because there are a lot of people that maybe don't want to bring children into the world because things are so bad, right? Things have always been so bad, right? There's nothing new under the sun. It's just real easy to feel that way and feel overwhelmed. But to the people who intentionally dare to bring children into this world and raise a family, I salute those people because they have chosen to move forward. They have chosen to bring life into the world. There are going to be critics everywhere, when, even when you parent. Well, I don't know. Some, if the kid does something wrong, oh my gosh, it must be that the fault they weighed did this, shouldn't have fed him that, shouldn't have given him this, shouldn't have medicated him this way, right? Everybody's always shooting. So really, I wanted to, to spur forward that thinking in you. Number one, if you're being critical, to examine why you're being critical. Oftentimes, it's driven by insecurity, speaking from my own experience, and also from personal experience and also what I witness. Typical, if you see somebody be very critical and hyper, it's easy to like push back and shut them up or criticize them. 
But I hope that this helps you stop for a second and be like, oh, you know what? I don't really understand what they're insecure about, but they're probably insecure about something. If you're in the business world, you could be insecure about your job, insecure about your leadership position, um, a hundred things. You could be insecure about the way you look, uh, your level of education, right? You put me in a room with a bunch of highly educated folks, Harvard folks and all that, right? I've been in rooms with them. It's easy to feel a little insecure. Why? Because I'm not, I'm not educated to that extent, to that level. But it's also easy for me to be like, oh yeah, higher education, right? They just book smarts and they're just trying to, you know, flex with a degree, but the degree doesn't mean anything in the business world. It's just a, a way to get a job. It has no, you know, has no um, merit on how intelligent you actually are. It just means you can remember things, right? So like that insecurity can really flare up for me because of that reason. Because there's one thing focusing on knowledge. You focus on knowledge, it's great. But knowledge without application is useless. It's just useless, right? That's critics. People who have knowledge without application or efforts to apply, what happens there is it's very easy to get critical and fall into what Teddy Roosevelt here is talking about, the people who just sit on the side because of their knowledge. But when you start to apply knowledge and then you take the knowledge, then you apply it, and if you know how to apply it well, right, we call that wisdom. <laughs> knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. Love that one. And so with this number 196, we're almost to 200. Hopefully it makes you think just a little bit more deeply about are you critical of people? If so, what's driving it? And then encourage you to like, hey, look, if you see something in the world that should be better and could be better, don't throw stones at it. Bring solutions to the table. Don't just bring solutions to the table, but do it. Try it. Get some bruised knees. Break a couple of bones. Fail. Because the people that fail are going to be the people that win. And even like Theodore Roosevelt says at the end, who at best, the people who try and do, at best, they'll know the triumph of high achievement. That's a great thing, right? To know that. But at the very worst, you will know that you dared greatly. There's so much fulfillment in that even when you lose. I can tell you from firsthand experience because I never want my place to be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. I hope this gives you some perspective for your week, a little bit of encouragement for your week, a little bit of clarity. Right now, I am in Palm Beach at the AAAS Summit, hanging out with some of you, I hope. And until next time, keep pursuing that clarity. I'll see you next week.